Okay, the first thing we're going to do today is we're going to give you a layout on the tools that you're going to need to do these projects. Number one is your wheelbarrow. It doesn't have to be as big as this, but this is what you're going to mix your mortar in. So get something close. And if you don't have one, you don't want to pay the money for one, go down and rent it. Second is a flat point shovel like this. Get them in all the material yards. Just a flat point. It's for scooping sand and mortar and everything, etc. Round point will not work. Now, this is a masonry hoe, and this is what you'll mix your mortar up with in that wheelbarrow. But a regular garden hoe will work. And then another tool is your mortar stand. And this is right here is what's going to hold the mortar on the board. So you put it out like so. You get yourself a piece of half inch or five eighths plywood. It can even be three quarter and at least two foot square. And this is what it'll look like. Put it on top of that. This is what you're going to take your mortar out of the wheelbarrow and you would be putting it on here. So let's start with my four foot level. It's uh, an American made, it's wood, it's very expensive. You probably not want to go this way, but uh, it's very necessary in building. And I'll show you what you can do if you don't want to go to the expense of like $50 for a level. You can go down to one of the hardware stores and get this little guy right here. It's uh, out of plastic, it'll work just fine. And uh, take a four foot board or so, and you can put your little level on it, and you can use that as the level. So it, therefore you got four feet. And next we'll start out with a good masonry trawl. It's about 11 inches long, and about four and a half inches wide, very necessary. Go down to the material yard, find one that fits your hand, that you feel good with, and That'll do you. Next is margin trawls. They're small ones like this. This is good for pointing, tuck pointing, and another little square one right here. As we go through the jobs, you'll see how necessary they are. Right here we have a concave joiner. This is very necessary. And uh, what we'll use this for is joining after we've laid the blocks and the brick and etc. You should use it for joining. It's called a concave joiner. And this one right here is a rake joiner and you just use it to rake the joints out. I'm sure you've seen that. Later on, we'll show you how to do it. And we have a brick hammer. This is really necessary. It's about like so. Go down there, find one to fit your hand. Pick it out, because you're gonna need it when you start doing your masonry work. And a little sledgehammer like this. It's a three pounder uh, for putting in stakes and etc. maybe breaking some stone. Works good. And then a chisel, a four inch chisel. This is necessary, and then there's also an inch and a half and a two inch, but I like these two right here. Go with a nice little square like this. Fits in a bucket. It's very necessary when you want to make a square on something if you wanted to square off with a pencil. Next, we're going to go with a carpenter's pencil. They're about eight inches long and they're flat. They have a lot of lead in them, so this is a very, very important tool to have, and crayons. You can get them in different colors, blue, yellow, red, etc., for making marks and stuff like that, especially on block. This works good. And get yourself a nice little knife for sharpening that pencil, cutting lines, etc. Next thing we're going to need is a masonry brush, about like so. You can go down to the hardware store. They have them down there. And a good pair of wire cutters. You have to have wire, you have to tie some steel in your block work and stuff. It's always good to have a pair of good wire cutters. And line, nylon line. This is about a thousand feet, one of our newer colors, really bright. And uh, I always like to take uh, a stick and take about 200 feet out and put it on the stick. And then I can put the line away in my bag and go with this. This will last for a long time, but it's, it's good. It stretches and you can take a lot of strength. And these right here are adjustable little brackets that you use like uh, line blocks and uh, they fit right over the block itself. 
And uh, they're adjustable, they can use it on an eight inch block, a six inch block, a 12 inch block, and they adjust up and down. And in a little while, I'll be showing you how to use those. And also a good pair of cotton gloves, there's a couple different kinds, uh, a couple of dollars a pair. Very necessary with block, because block are really sharp. And a set of line blocks, wood, Get them at the material yard. In a little while, I'm going to show you how to use them. And this little guy was hiding. It's a little sub-level. This is necessary when you're building leads. And when you're building leads, you'll want it for plumbing and leveling, small stuff. And now we're going to make a batch of mortar. We're going to start out with 12 shovels of sand, three shovels of cement, and two shovels of fire clay. And if you don't like fire clay, which I do, you can use lime. So here we go. Make all shovels even. One, two, 11, and 12. And next step, we're gonna put in three shovels of cement. One, Three. Right there. Next step, two shovels of fire clay. One. And two. And like I said, if you don't use fire clay, you can use lime. But the mixture is always the same with a wheelbarrow of this size. Now the first thing I'm going to do is take the hoe and move all the material forward. And then I'm going to come around and move it around, go to that side and bring all the material back to that side, get it ready for the water for this side. But the idea is to mix all the sand, the clay, and the cement all together. Okay, here we go. We're going to start mixing this up dry bringing it all forward, taking it right down to the bottom, get the sand and the cement and the clay all mixed up really good, like so. Okay, now we'll bring it back this way. Mixing it up nice and smooth here. The smoother you make this, and when you're mixing it with the water, it'll be a lot easier and it won't lump up too bad for you. And now you can see how it's come together. There. Now we're going to start adding the water, so I'm going to go back to that end of the wheelbarrow. Always use this end of the wheelbarrow. Okay, now what we're going to do is we've got a five gallon bucket of water and what we're going to do is put about two gallons in this guy right now, about like that. We can always add more later. And here we go with our mix. Just a little bit at a time, going all the way to the bottom. And that way it kind of creates a toe, just like this. starting to tighten up. This is probably the hardest part of the mix. Looks like we're ready to add just a little more water. Remember now, just a little bit of water at a time from now on. Down. 
like this is going to work out just right. Probably used about three gallons of water there. lumps out of it. Looking good. Almost there. Well, I think we have it. And when, as soon as you're through mixing with the hoe, you put it in a bucket of water and you clean it up like that. Then you don't have to worry about any mortar building up on it. The shovel and you wet it down because you never want to put a dry shovel into that. Otherwise it'll all stick to the shovel and it won't slide off and go on the mud board. Now we're going to go to break and as soon as we get back we'll get ready to start laying some block. Now we're going to put some mortar on the board and get started laying block. Notice how I picked the shovel up like this right here. So you use the muscles under your arm if you lift like this, it's a big suction and it's really hard on you. So if you go like this, you, you can lift twice as much. Okay. Back in the water. Now for everybody that's learning, you take a little bit of mortar and put it on your trawl about like so. And this is, this is, watch this right here, because this is the way I'm going to spread it on the block. The first inch or so of the, of the uh, trawl, you take and turn it up, and that's the way you're going to spread it. And this is the way you can practice. You can spend hours doing the same thing. And when you get it right, you'll be ready for your block. There we go. Now we'll start laying some block. Okay, now we'll lay a little mortar out here. Block. Okay, we'll lay our first block. Now I've drawn a chalk line along here so that way I can line it up. I know exactly where the expansion joint right here I'm starting. So I've got my chalk line there. I got to move it right into the line. Next thing I do, I'll take this little level. I'll put it on there and see what we got. A little bit high on this end so I'll Now we're going to put a little mortar on here for the half block on the lead. Okay. Here we go. Then take my trawl, about the first three to a half inches or so of the trawl, and just cut your mortar off. Have anything on the foundation, floor? Pick it up. You be using it. Running level here. <laughs> Pretty good there. A little bit this way. Right there. Plum. This is called plumbing. You want to make sure it gets nice and straight. There we go. We'll plumb two corners. 
just like that. That lead is ready to go. Now we're going to go down to this corner right here, this end, and we're going to put a little lead just like this right there. This wall is going to be five feet, uh, six feet long. This wall is exactly the kind of wall that I learned how to lay block on when I was in school. So there you go. Okay, now that this is, uh, we're going to take and lay this out. I'm going to make sure, I'm going to measure this with my measuring tape. Make sure it's right on 80 inches. It's right on. That's good. That little lead going. Okay. Here we go. Right on the line. Now, We'll check it with the level. Perfect. Check it this way. Perfect. We're good to go on that one. Now we'll put a little more mortar on the top for get ready for that half. Just like that. Notice when I take the mortar off of there, I do a little snap. That way it stays on the trawl. Back to the level. The lead always has to be perfect. If the lead's perfect, the rest of the wall will be perfect. So take your time, do a good job on your lead. Now it's level. Check the plumb. Perfect. And check this corner. Let's have a look to see what we got. Perfect. There you go. Now that the lead is in, we're going to stretch a line and lay these blocks in in the center. I'm going to show you how to use that line and those blocks. Okay, here we go. What we're going to do is we're going to set the block here so and, and the line so what we do is we put the line in the block about like so and probably bring it around twice and then lock it up just like that so the tighter you pull it the stronger it is and i'll lay it on the first course just like so and then we'll take the block and we'll go to the other end Okay, now we're at the other end here. We'll just put that block on the same way, just like so. It's just enough tension. We'll wrap it around twice and come up inside there. And if one isn't enough, we'll wrap it twice. Right there. Now, what we want to do is the line to follow the top of this particular block. Okay, now we're going to spread some mortar and lay these blocks in. There. On a block, there's two sides. That's the bottom, that's the rough side. That's the side you don't want to pick up that goes to the bottom. This right here has a little flange on it where you can pick it up just like this, like a grip, just like that. But when you're starting out, since this block weighs 36 pounds, you'll want to just take and set it up like this. And because you did your practice here, you'll be fine. Just put a block, just put a little bit of mortar just there like that. And a little bit of mortar here just like this. A little there. I always lay them like this.
container. Last block going in, or a brick, is called an enclosure. So, plenty of mortar on it. There. I'm gonna get this over here. This is the one I like to put up on the corner of the mud board. Got a little bit of a tuck there. In she goes. You lay that right, this is perfect. You lay it right to the line and the line does not lie. It's always perfectly straight. There. We'll set the line on this half block and we'll lay this course in. There. Now, once we lay those in, be perfectly straight. This mortar is getting just a little bit stiff, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that can of water and I'm going to mix it up a little bit. Coffee can, a little water next to you, especially on a hot day. Work that water into the mortar, work it around like this. And this end, just move this way. There. Now we'll start laying this side in. That little snap on the trowel. There. Let's put a little bit of mortar ends here. You can move a little faster if you have a little extra mortar on those webs. And voila. And now we're ready to fill it in. We'll lay some block. When you're first learning, just set your block down. You don't want to go wearing yourself out. It's called a head joint. Just like so. It's much easier to pick up a block this way. Pick them up like this and you'll last all day. There's one. Now, we'll cu start cutting the mortar off of them. First three inches of your trawl, and once you pick the mortar off of it, snap. Right on the face. You don't have to worry about the back too much. See, when I was in school, you lay the block by picking it up on the web. And this is an awful strain on a guy. Why well, that little Hawaiian guy just go like crazy when he do this, just like this. And he was a good mason. There we go. Following the line. Perfect enclosure. Now we'll get ready for the enclosure. And we'll put this guy right into place. Right there. enclosure a lot of times you'll lose a head joint so you just go in there like this and put it right back just like that now we're ready to start our lead all over again okay now this course right here is the it's a two-foot section uh, this course is the third block 
and every third block is a steel block. And you put, it's called a bond beam, and this is what I'm going to put in right now, is a bond beam and lay the steel out. A little more mortar on this guy right here. Right there. And here. This is a bond beam course. What happened was when I came to the job and the material was delivered, they didn't deliver me but six bomb beams and I need 12 for this wall. So what we're gonna do is I hammered out a couple right here. When I get to that end, I'm gonna show you how to break it out with a hammer. There we go. Okay, check with a level, see what we got. Almost perfect. Right about there. And then we'll check this way. Perfect. Now I'm going to cut the mortar off and make sure this thing is plumb. This level is 100 years old and only has a bubble on one side, so that's fine. Yeah, 100 years old, I'll take, take my time with it. There it is. And we're gonna check this side. Right here. See where we're at. That's it. Now we're gonna to go to the other end and set one of these bond beams. Okay, now we're gonna to have to make a bond beam for this end right here. I've already broken out the other bond beams and ready to go, but I wanted to show you how to, how to do a block. You turn it upside down like so. In just a little bit at a time, you'll break this out. I'm gonna break it down about a half an inch or so just enough to where two pieces of half inch steel can lay in along here. Take your time, block's really soft, no big deal. There. Just go to about a half an inch down. Okay, that one's ready to go in. Okay, now we'll lay that bond beam. Let's lay that guy in. Here we go. There. Line it up on this side. Now we'll check the level. There it is. And we'll check across this way. That's good. Cut the mortar out of the way. Now we'll check the plumb. And then we'll check the plumb this way. See what we got here. Oh, that's looking good. Very nice. Looking good. Okay, now we'll set our line on each end. Put that here. Yeah. Line's getting a little bit loose, so I think what we'll do is we'll tighten it up. There it is. Just pull it in about a half an inch. Right there. I want to make sure that the line is snug enough. Okay. Okay, now we'll spread the mortar. After a while, you'll be able to spread it just like me. Take your time at first. It'll come. There, a little bit of mortar on the joints there. Help the block stand up on its own. There.
And two. Okay, here we go. Bond beam course. This is the course that holds the steel. Right there is a little bit of a rock. That's a problem. It's making the block cocked. So I'm gonna pull it out, put it on my knee, find the rock, take it out, and go right back. There we are. Perfect. Now, move a little quicker like me. You won't even take the time to set it down. You just spread the mortar. Let's go. Here we go. Perfect. One. And we'll cut it off of this guy. Two. There we are. I'm going for the enclosure. We'll close it up. Get that last block in there. Get that joint nice and full. And she goes. The enclosure. For every enclosure, you usually you have to add a little bit of mortar in that joint. Okay, when you're building a wall, it doesn't really matter whether it's five, six feet, or it's 20 feet. You always start with a bar of steel on one end. That's the first web. And then you go one bar of steel every other web. Every other block, like every block. And you always have one on the end. Okay, I've got two pieces of steel cut. And when we come back, I'll show you how we're gonna place them in the wall. Okay, I've cut these two bars of steel and we're gonna put them in. And just cutting that block down a half an inch to lay this steel in, it's gonna work out great. Just like that. Two half inch bars side by side. And then we have our vertical bar of steel. Always starts at the end. And then you got a bar of steel every 16 inches by two feet square. Normally it comes out of the foundation, but we didn't want to do it here since this is a classroom and we didn't want to drill any holes in the floor. So I'm just basically showing you that the steel should be in the uh, foundation and up 16 inches. But anyway, you drop your steel from every corner and then every block. And it would be just like this. Every other web would have its own bar of steel, which would make it every 15, uh, 16 by two feet square. And this one right here. And it just so happens it's right close to the end. So you, have, you leave this bar here and you always have another one at the very end. Always have a bar of steel at the end. Excellent. Okay, now we'll put that last half block up there, and that'll be a bond beam. Bond beam and another set of steel. Okay. Verticals are every 16 inches. Okay. Back to the same thing, we'll see how our level is. And then we'll check it this way. And check the plumb. 
And then we'll check it here. Perfect. I like that. Well, we're done with this side. Now we'll move a few things around. We'll take a little break and move our mortar and everything over there. Now we're going to use these little brackets. And the reason for these is so you can work on a wall. And uh, so let's just say that the, you had a corner here. You couldn't stretch a line block through here. So that's why they made these little brackets. And we'll set our line on it. And when we pull it, it'll kind of choke it to one side. So we'll put that right to the end. And that's the way we'll use it. Bring it around and just choke it. And that's what they're for. Now we'll lay these blocks in. Now that I have that wall in, we'll lay in a, our horizontal steel. Since the wall's finished, as high as we're going, and drop the vertical bars, starting right here at the end and on down. Now that the wall's finished, we're going to take this concave jointer and we're going to joint this wall up. We'll do all our verticals first, that's the up and down, and then we'll go across the horizontals. Since this was the first course down below, that'll be the hardest joint, so we'll polish it like that, like this, like that. We had a little bee hole there, so we'll just take a little bit of mortar and put it right into place. Never use your finger because you only get 10 of these guys, so use your tools. Just fill it in with the joiner. little bee hole right there. We'll just take a little bit of mortar and we'll just fill it right in. There we are. Nice full joints. Okay. Last course. I'm just finishing it off. Now that we have this side finished, we're going to let this set up for a little while so we can brush it. When we don't want to smear anything, it's nice and polished now. We'll just move over to the other side, let this sit for a couple minutes, and then we'll come back and brush it. Now, what we're going to do is take this brush and brush any little knobs off of it, clean it up, and make it look real nice. And if you're really worried about little smears like this right here and everything, you take a piece of burlap sack and you just rub it on there right there and clean it off. But this wall, all in all, is very clean. Now take a little time and let the mortar dry so you don't smear it, but yet you can still brush it off. And everything that's down below here, you take your trawl and you move it away from the wall and you clean everything up all the way around so that way you're not walking it everywhere. So just take and cut it away from the wall like this. Try to keep everything as clean as possible. One part of the job is keeping everything clean. And I'm going to go right on around. We're finished. Well, there you have it. We're all cleaned up. I hope you learned something here today. I think you have. At least you know how to lay block. And set the steel is important. And uh, joining, keeping everything nice and clean. I'm Steve Kelly. See you next time.